Hello, welcome to the Monday, November 4th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, sadly, it came out a little bit too late to cover in Friday's podcast, but late on Thursday, Google released an update for Google Chrome. Now, this update only fixes two vulnerabilities, but what makes it special is that Google warns that for one of the vulnerabilities, that CVE 2019-13720, use after free vulnerability in audio, uh, there is already an exploit in the wild. Kaspersky Labs originally reported this vulnerability to Google on Tuesday, so Google was pretty quick in coming up with a patch for this issue. It's relatively straightforward to update Google Chrome. Actually, you kind of have to try hard not to update it, but double check and make sure that you are running version 78. Just going to the about page that gives you the version should usually trigger also an update check and push the update for you. And talking about critical vulnerabilities being exploited in the wild, looks like the Blue Keep vulnerability is getting some attention now. Now, there has been exploit for it, uh, pretty widely available, like as part of Metasploit and such, but sort of the big worm that everybody was sort of warning about uh, hasn't really happened yet. Uh, the latest uh, evidence that the bad guys are working on weaponizing this vulnerability first further. Our Honeypot detects published by Kevin Beaumont first on Twitter and uh, he has found it attacking a number of his honeypots with the intent to install crypto miners. Crypto coin miners are certainly not a very advanced exploit, usually sort of the bottom feeders a little bit when it comes uh, to exploiting systems, but them using the blue keep vulnerability also kind of shows there are probably not a lot of high value systems necessarily out there anymore that are vulnerable to this problem. Also, this is not a worm per se, it's just basically someone scanning systems that do expose RDP and then trying essentially the Metasploit RDP exploit against these systems. But if you need a little bit more motivation to get the last systems patched internally that are still vulnerable to Blue Keep, this is probably a good reason. And based on a mention in the hackernews.com, I saw an interesting blog post from Shell's Systems, actually Ascar at Shell's Systems did publish that with an authenticated and unauthenticated remote code execution vulnerability in our config. Our config is an open source web-based tool that allows you to manage Cisco switches, routers, and uh, various other network gear. Pretty neat tool actually. So I was a little bit concerned about this vulnerability and did see some active exploitation of this vulnerability in our honeypots. And well, no real big surprise about this particular aspect of it because the exploit is trivial. All you have to do is essentially add the command that you would like to execute to a URL. So I looked into our config a little bit closer, installed it on a test system to see how it actually works. And a couple of observations here. First of all, I haven't seen any updates uh, to our config in their GitHub repository in quite a while. It appears to be somewhat abandoned. Also, there's a note from who I think is the author stating essentially that they're no longer going to release any updates, but they're going to approve uh, pull requests via GitHub. Also, the discovery of the vulnerability has got no response from any of the authors of our config. However, in order to exploit the vulnerability, the vulnerable URL is part of the install directory 
of our config. In order to use our config, you have to delete this install directory. So maybe it's not really all that bad. It's likely going to affect, of course, sort of abandoned installs of our config where someone thought, hey, you know, let's give this tool a try, but then never really sort of installed it completely. Now the authenticated vulnerability on the other hand does work against a normal script within our config. So that's exploitable in a completed install where you did delete the install directory. On the other hand again, this is authenticated. So the attacker first needs to log in. I have not seen any exploit attempts yet against the authenticated vulnerability. So in short, keep an eye on it, but overall, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Uh, if you do have our config installed, uninstall it. It's uh, no longer maintained apparently, so uh, probably best to get rid of it. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.